Zealand is located in the South Pacific Ocean, approximately 2,000 kilometers east of Australia. The country is comprised of two distinct land masses and has a total land area of 286,000 kilometers squared. Being an archipelago means evolution was able to take place in isolation for more than 80 million years before any humans settled on the land. New Zealand is a country of exceptional beauty, with one of the most unique environments in the world. Years of isolation has resulted in the country not only possessing distinctive flora and fauna, like the kakapo, the world's heaviest and only flightless nocturnal parrot, and the kiwi, a small, flightless bird with nostrils at the end of its beak. But the ecosystems in which these and many other species are found are equally, if not more important. These ecosystems range from forests like the Kauri Forest in the North Island, the braided river system in the South Island, as well as the geothermal ecosystems such as fumaroles. Despite having a unique landscape and still being relatively isolated from other land masses, New Zealand is not exempt from environmental issues. In fact, the greatest amount of indigenous biodiversity loss over the last century has been recorded in New Zealand. This loss of biodiversity has been placed in the same category as the dinosaur extinction 65 million years ago. The most significant land use in New Zealand is tree cover followed by herbaceous cover which is far more prevalent on the South Island of the country, while the Northern Island is significantly more transformed as a result of greater cultivated land. Since the first humans settled on the land only 800 million years ago, anthropogenic modification continues to be one of the main causes of habitat loss, as well as species loss. It is for this reason that New Zealanders strive to conserve as much of the natural landscape and species they can to ensure that even in the face of change, their fauna and flora will be sustained. With this film, my aim is to assess whether New Zealand's current protected areas are effective enough to conserve the unique biodiversity as well as the associated ecosystems and to give a practical demonstration on how to create a systematic conservation plan for the country. More than 80% of New Zealand's biodiversity is endemic. 70,000 terrestrial species are endemic. They include plants, fungi, insects, arachnids, reptiles and birds. New Zealand has no land mammals and 62% of the land is protected, both marine and terrestrial. New Zealand has 5,849 protected areas, of which 14 are national parks, 52 conservation parks, 3 World Heritage Sites, 6 Ramsar Wetlands of International Importance, and 55 Reserve Areas. Fiordland National Park in New Zealand's Southland is one of the most ecologically important areas. Its landscape is remarkable. And even until today, the full extent of the landscape and biodiversity is not completely known. For the purpose of this conservation plan, 18 endemic species were chosen. 12 birds, 3 reptiles, 1 mammal and 2 amphibians. Only one mammal could be chosen for the purpose of creating terrestrial reserves because New Zealand has no other land mammals, only bats. These are the methods used in order to create the maps in Diva, Idrisi and the data from IUCN, GBIF and Diva. Any uncertainties will be cleared up in the detailed slides. Two methods can be used to create conservation plans. 
Systematic Conservation Planning uses hexagons to create optimized and more connected reserve systems, whereas the ecological approach uses the digital elevation and watershed, the physical environment, to create real systems. Both planning units can be used, however. A systematic approach is simpler and many times more efficient. Ecological planning units tend to return an error message in Marksan if more than 2,000 or even 3,000 planning units are exceeded. Tenure maps illustrate the protected areas, agriculture and infrastructure like roads and rails. Tenure cess maps, however, display the land available for conservation along with the protected area network of the country. These maps provide the information on which areas are already conserved as well as how many extra reserves there should be. When using the ecological approach, only seven species were protected under the current reserves. The new map generated shows that a total of 16 species are protected under the new newly generated reserve. Using the hexagons as planning units resulted in only four species being protected under 50% targets. However, the new reserve would be able to protect 15 of the species using a boundary length modifier of 6. This would ensure that the more tightly reserved network is created where interaction between species are better. Implementing strategies to optimize the protection of fauna and flora requires a joint effort from government, private sector as well as landowners and the wider community. As the beneficiaries of biodiversity, it rests on all citizens to be responsible for what is theirs.